along those same veins, you know, sort of speaking of 90s animated musicals that I've missed out on all this time, finally saw Anastasia. Now, Anasta this is the story of Anastasia, the, uh, a woman, uh, so it's about the Russian Revolution and the, you know, the death of the Tsar and his family, the Romanovs, but the idea that maybe one of them, the Princess Anastasia, survived, which is a real historical thing, that there was this woman um, in the, what, 1950s or 40s, I guess, going around Europe claiming to be Anastasia. Now, in real life, it turned out that she was not Anastasia, and there is now historical um, and forensic evidence that shows that, I'm sorry to say, Anastasia did die alongside her family. Um, yeah, listen, it, so this movie takes the, you know, sort of the fantasy, I don't want to say Disney princess, but that kind of idea, that turn of the story saying, no, this is Anastasia, and she has, you know, sort of fallen into poverty and forgotten who she is, and she meets a, a guy, uh, what do I want to call him, a con artist, who is himself trying to find somebody to pass off as Anastasia, but of course, in the way that these movies work, he has found the actual Anastasia. Uh, Anastasia here is played by Meg Ryan, John Cusack plays the con artist, and all of Anastasia's stuff is actually pretty fun. I enjoyed it for the most part. Uh, there's some really touching moments in there, particularly when he, she meets her surviving uh, relative um, played by uh, Murder, She Wrote. But the rest of the movie, so you've got this great you know, sort of princess story and this rags to riches story, right? But it's paired for some reason with a story about Ratsputin, which now, Ratsputin's another historical figure, and he was an aesthetic, uh, a monk, who was in, who met and sort of, I guess you could say, seduced the Romanov family toward the end of their reign. He hung around the palace a lot. Uh, he claimed to have healing powers. He was himself largely a con artist. Um, he was uh, rumored to be involved in the dark arts. And it's arguable that his advice led to the fall of the Romanov family as he gave the Tsar a lot of really crummy advice that the Tsar followed that made the people dislike the Tsar. Now that's a simplistic way of stating it. There's certainly a lot of other socioeconomic reasons for the Russian Revolution, but you can't say that Ratsputin didn't have a part in it. Now here he's played as a kooky, crazy, undead sorcerer played by um, Christopher Lloyd, who uses his magic to create the revolt. And for some reason wants all of the Romanovs dead, and now that he finds out that Anastasia's still alive, wants her dead too. Now he and Anastasia never really cross paths until the very end of the movie. She doesn't even know that he's out there. It's the, so, which makes all of his stuff feel very tacked on. Like you had this very nice movie, this very kind of standard, you know, romantic comedy, rags to riches, story of Anastasia. And then somebody at the studio went, hey, this thing needs a magic bad guy. And so then they added all that stuff in. And it all leads to this weird battle at the end where he's using magic to animate statues that she has to give away from. I didn't care for all of that. So the Anastasia stuff, pretty good. The Rasputin stuff, pretty bad. That adds up to a movie that's right down the middle, three stars.